It's been over seven years since I started using macOS. I made a switch back in 2014, but it wasn't until 2018 that I discovered setup and started exploring new apps and trying them out on a regular basis. Over the years, I've gathered a list of Mac apps that have helped me be more productive and make my life better. And in this video, we're gonna talk about 27 of those apps that I use pretty much every day. Just a quick note, I've written a blog post on this same topic. And if you prefer to read rather than watch a video, the link will be in the description below. And with that, let's get into it. I started using a password manager when I subscribed to Setup in 2018. Secrets is the only one available on Setup, so I thought why not give it a try. Everything was working fine until I got back to PC gaming and had to manually enter my passwords every time I logged into an account. And then I started digging around and realized 1Password is one of, if not the most popular password managers out there. So I started using it and it's been great so far. The best part? I don't have to memorize anything but the master password to unlock my 1Password. And I'm glad that I didn't have any of my accounts hacked before I realized how important a password manager is and started using it. If you're not already using a password manager, I mean, you need to get your hands on one. Ever since I discovered Alfred from Ali Abdul's video, it's been a replacement for the default spotlight feature on my Mac. This app has a lot of bells and whistles, but my favorite feature has to be the ability to use keywords for web searches. It has the list of default keywords that you can use to search for a bunch of different things on the web. For instance, if I want to Google something, instead of manually open a browser window, go to google.com and type in a search phrase, I now can open Alfred and type Google followed by the search phrase. It will open a new window with the search results for me. But the cool part is that you can customize all the keywords to your likings. And if you can't find something on the list, you can always add a custom search. Obviously, there are a lot more you can do with Alfred, like searching through your web bookmarks, searching through your clipboard history, doing advanced calculations, finding and playing music on Apple Music, etc. But my second favorite feature is use Alfred to quickly log into websites that I've stored in one password. For example, say I want to do keyword research using Ahrefs, all I need to do is open Alfred and type in 1P followed by Ahrefs and it will take me to the login page. Simple. Now I gotta confess that this app is way too advanced for my needs. So I'll admit that I'm not fully utilizing its potential. But even that, it's been very useful and convenient. Plus the features are there if I ever need them in the future. So if you haven't already, definitely check it out. Bartender is a great app that you can use to hide your less frequently used apps from the front of your menu bar. This is especially helpful if your MacBook is your main device and you're not using an external monitor. Just open the preference and drag your most used apps over to the shown menu bar items and keep those least used ones in the hidden menu bar. And whenever you need those in the hidden menu bar, you can click the three dots to show the hidden menu. You can also activate the feature to show the hidden menu bar by hovering the mouse over. I can't recall exactly why I switched over Canary Mail from the default mail app, but I've been using it as my primary email app for three years and I'm pretty happy with it. The two of my favorite features are the rate notifications and the one click unsubscribe. The rate notifications is just like the one you have on WhatsApp, except Canary Mail will actually notify you when the recipient reads your email. So now you know it when someone intentionally ignores your emails. Have you ever accidentally subscribed to an email list and before you know it, your inbox is full of spam and promotional emails? Worse still, they don't even have an option to unsubscribe at the bottom of their emails. That's when the one-click unsubscribe comes into play. Though it doesn't work all the time, most of the time you could just right-click an email and click the unsubscribe button and it will bring you to the unsubscribe page. Another feature highlight is that Canary Mail offers end-to-end -end encryption. According to Canary Mail, end-to-end -end encryption means that your email is encrypted on your device and decrypted on your recipient's device. At no point in the middle is the email readable, not even by the secure email provider. I think that's pretty cool, and I typically just set it at auto and encrypt by default. If there's one thing I don't like about macOS, it has to be the inability to completely and properly uninstall an app. Simply dragging an app to the trash bin does ostensibly remove the app. 
but all the files associated with it are still there. That's why I started looking around and eventually found Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac optimizes your machine in five different aspects, cleanup protection, speed, applications, and files. For the first three sections, you can choose to perform individual optimization based on your needs. For example, if you need to clear some junk and free up some space, you can do a system junk cleanup. Or if you suspect that your machine is impacted with malwares, you can perform a malware removal. But usually I just do the smart scan once a week or so, and it will automatically take care of everything. However, the main reason I started using CleanMyMac was because I needed to uninstall an app properly. CleanMyMac has an uninstaller that does just that. It shows you all the apps you have installed on your system, and you can choose to uninstall any of those apps completely. It also has an updater that updates apps for you and an extensions feature that lets you manage your Safari extensions and the apps you have installed in your preference pane. Last but not least, you can use Spacelands to get a visual size comparison of your folders and files before deleting them and large and old files feature to locate and remove large files that you didn't open for a while. An amazing app overall, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Screenshot is like the default screenshot tool in macOS, but on steroids. For starters, you can customize shortcuts to screen capture an area or a full screen capture, which is the same as the default tool. But with CleanShot, you can also capture a particular window, self-timer screen capture, capture text using OCR technology, scrolling capture, and screen recording and they provide you with a cloud account to store your screen captures and recordings so you can easily share with others if you need to. But the best thing about CleanShot, in my opinion, is the annotation tool. After taking a screenshot, I can click the edit icon to open the annotation tool and it allows me to edit the screenshot however I want. I can crop it and adjust the dimension, add another screenshot to current one, add shapes, arrows, or text, blur out an area, highlight an area, add numbers, or paint it. All in all, CleanShot is a great tool and I really enjoy using it. In fact, all the screen recordings that you're seeing right now are recorded using CleanShot. Next up, we have a universal video downloader that allows you to download pretty much any media from any website, except CRM protected content like Netflix and Apple Music, of course. For simple video download, all you have to do is go to the video page and click the Downy browser extension, and it will add the download to the queue. If you don't know how to install the browser extension, I've included a link to the installation guide in my blog post, link in the description below. But what if the browser extension doesn't work? Well, it does happen sometimes, but don't worry, it has a feature called User Guided Extraction that you can activate by clicking Command E on your keyboard. It will then open a window where you can paste the URL that has the media you want to download. As soon as the page loads, you will see all the downloadable media appearing on the right sidebar. From there, you can pick which media to download. But here's the best part. Clicking this image icon will reveal all the images hosted on this particular page. You can even see the dimensions. And when you found what you want, just click the download icon and you're done. However, I'm not endorsing you to steal others' images, so don't take it the wrong way. Forklift is a great file manager that lets you do a lot of amazing stuff, such as syncing files on a dual pane UI and renaming multiple files at once. But it also supports remote connection to web servers. I mainly use it for SFTP connection to my blog for file transfers, but you can use it to connect to an Amazon server, a Rackspace server, Google Drive, etc. However, I wouldn't recommend you replacing the default Finder with it despite its similarities with Finder and all the amazing features it offers. That's because I've had experiences where the app quitting itself unexpectedly, so I don't think it's as stable as Finder is. I don't know about you, but being a control freak, I find it satisfying to be able to monitor the usage data and system information of my computer. I like knowing how much of the CPU power is being used, how much of the RAM is being occupied, what the download and upload speed are, and all sorts of detailed information. If you're as weird as I am, I think you're gonna love this tool. So all the system information is divided in several categories. In the CPU section, you can see the power usage across different time frames, the CPU temperature, the current processes that use the most power, usage of your GPU, 
even the FPS of your display. The same goes to the memory section. You can see the memory usage across different time frames, what processors are occupying the most memory, etc. Again, it's the same for the disk section. You have an overview of all your hard drive's status, how much space you have used and is left, the reading and writing speed of those drives, Heck, even the health status of your drives. And then there's the network section where it shows you your current connection status, your IP address, download and upload speed, and current processes. The final section is the sensors where it shows you temperatures of your CPU and hard drives, fan speed, and other nerdy stuff. But my favorite feature is the ability to customize the items I want shown on the menu bar and hide the rest. Carabiner Elements is a keyboard customizer that allows you to map a key on your keyboard to another key. But this probably isn't an app for most of you watching this video, especially if you've always used a MacBook or Apple's keyboard. But if you ever use a custom keyboard for your Mac, this is a great tool to do some custom key mappings to suit your need. I personally use it for simple key mappings like changing the command keys to option keys, changing the pause key to eject, etc. But there are way more complex stuff you can do with this app. They even allow you to import modifications for a specific keyboard from their website. As a non-native, I've always felt insecure about my English, whether it be speaking or writing. And I gotta say, over the past few years of learning and improving my English, Ludwig has been one of the most important tools that helped me along the way. It can be a dictionary for both words and idioms that gives you definitions and example sentences. It can also be a translation tool that supports a bunch of different languages. But there are more cool stuff you can do with it. The first one is comparing the frequency of two sentences. Enter two sentences and add a VS between them, and it'll show you a frequency comparison to tell you which one is most frequently used. And you can click on each one to see real-world use cases from authoritative sources. Next up, we have discovering the missing word. If you want to use a phrase for your writing, but aren't sure about one of the words in that phrase, you can use Ludwig for inspiration. For instance, if you enter a phrase in the search bar and replace the missing word with asterisk, it will show you real-world use cases that has that phrase but with different variations of that missing word. I can't even begin to tell you how much this feature has helped me improve my writing. If you already have a few ideas of words for that phrase but want to find the most frequently used, you can use this feature called paraphrasing your sentences. Enter the phrase in the search bar but add an underscore in front of the uncertain word and it will show you the frequency comparison for all the most used variations. Like others, clicking on each one will show you real-world use cases. That should give you enough inspiration and confidence. Next one is called comparing the frequency of words, which is pretty similar to the first one, except this is for words. The search operator you use for this is a little different, but it will still show you the percentages of frequency and let you decide which variation to use. Last one is ordering a group of words. This is useful when you are not sure about the correct order of a group of words. Wrapping that group of words with a pair of curly brackets will again show you the frequency comparison along with real-world examples. Ludwig is one of those apps that I use every single day, so if you do a lot of writing, definitely check it out. This app is relatively new to me as I've only used it twice. But as someone I'm willing to pay for an Adobe subscription, I find this AI-powered photo editing app pretty promising. To be clear, I didn't do a lot of photo editing prior to starting this YouTube channel, so I can't really tell how good Lumina is compared to other photo editing apps. In fact, I might need more time to tell if this app would stay in my arsenal, but for the time being, seeing what you can do with this app on their website, it's pretty promising. Lunar is a brightness control app for your Mac when you're connecting it to an external display. Without it, you can only adjust brightness physically on your monitor. But if you're not using an external monitor for your Mac, you probably don't need this. It has a bunch of fancy features that I'm not using, so I'm not going to talk about those. I'm on a free plan and it gets the job done for me. Mosaic is another essential tool on your Mac that allows you to resize and reposition windows with a simple drag and drop. My favorite feature is the ability to create custom layouts the way I want. For instance, I created a set of layouts that works both on my MacBook and my external display. You can choose to trigger the layouts by dragging the window, 
dragging the window to the screen top or dragging the window with the option key help. One downside of this app is that it doesn't support iCloud synchronization. So after setting up your custom layout, I highly recommend you manually exporting your app preference file to the backup folder of your computer. OneSwitch is a convenient tool that gathers all the powerful switches in one place. I personally only use the keep awake feature when I need to keep my MacBook awake for an extended period of time. But other mentionable features that you might find useful are toggles for dark mode, do not disturb, night shift, show hidden files, and change screen resolution. As far as the headphones connect, I have a better recommendation toward the end of this video. So make sure you stay until the end. I like to keep track of my online shopping deliveries, and Parcel is my favorite app for that. It's pretty straightforward. It does what all tracking apps do, tracking updates with push notifications. But unlike most of other tracking apps that only have a mobile app, Parcel also has a macOS app, which is great since I'm pretty much on my computer all the time. Anyway, there are a few one-click features about Parcel that I want to talk to you about. The first one is the ability to track on the website. If you suspect the app isn't getting the latest tracking update, you can click the three dot icon of a delivery and click track on website. The app will redirect you to the official tracking page. Second feature is called a find on map where it shows you the shipping route on an interactive map. As a visual person, I kind of enjoy using this feature. Not a must, but definitely a plus. Next one is that you can one click contact customer service. If your parcel is taking too long to deliver and you want to contact the shipping courier to find out what's going on, clicking this will prompt a call window to the customer service. A bonus feature that I personally like about parcel is that it has a date counter next to a delivery and you can customize it to days till delivery or days after postage. That way you will know it where a parcel is taking too long and that you might want to reach out to customer service. This is possibly one of my favorite tools on this list that I didn't know I needed. Basically, Paste is a clipboard tool that lets you save everything you've copied in one place and in an organized way. For starters, it gives you the option to have unlimited clipboard so you can keep everything you've copied for as long as you want. There's been times where I needed to look for something that I had copied maybe weeks or months ago, and Paste just got it covered. If you choose to enable the unlimited clipboard, things can get a little chaotic and messy. That's when the pinboard organization comes into play. It allows you to create and categorize your clipboard items however you want. And whenever you need it, a simple keyboard shortcut will open your paste dashboard and show you all your items. It also has an intelligent search feature that allows you to search through your clipboard and pinboards, which is amazing. Another feature highlight is that it supports iCloud Sync. That way you don't have to worry about making manual backups from time to time. And if you're on the go and need to access your clipboard right then and there, they have an iOS app too. Though I find the iOS app a little clunky and not always syncing the latest changes. Let me start off by saying that I'm not a heavy PDF user. When it comes to a PDF tool, the features I'm looking for for the most part are the ability to add and delete pages, fill and sign, encrypt and decrypt. PDF Pen is able to get those jobs done imperfectly because there is no direct way to decrypt a PDF with this app. You still need to use the default Mac preview app to export the encrypted PDF as a new PDF and the password will, will be removed. The downside is that it will also remove all the links in that PDF. I haven't found a solution for that yet, and I know the best app for that is Adobe Acrobat Pro, but my current usage is not demanding enough for a hefty Adobe subscription, so I guess that's that. That said, PDF Tool is a great tool and I highly recommend it if you too are unwilling to pay for an Adobe subscription. Permute is a tool that converts media files to a different format in a super fast way. And when I say fast, it's really fast. Now, of course, the actual speed of a conversion depends on the size and format of the video. But just an example, I dragged a 4 minute 1080p video to Permute to convert. It took less than a second to complete. And the best way to use it, really, is bulk conversion. Just get all the files you want to convert and drag them all to Permute, then click Convert. One thing though, Using Permute to convert your media files won't compress the size. If you need to compress the file size specifically for images, check out Short Pixel. As the name suggests, 
PhotoBox allows you to edit images in bulk. There are a ton of things that you can do with this app, such as adding watermarks, resizing, optimizing, etc. But I typically use it for bulk resizing and renaming. I mean, who the hell still adds watermarks to images these days? And upon my task, the optimization tool is mediocre at best. I tried two images with maximum optimization and both only reduced 100 to 200 kilobytes. If you're looking for a good image optimization tool, Shot Pixel is my top recommendation. If you do design work of any sort, Pixel Snap is a great tool to measure anything on your screen. Say you want to find out the dimension of an area on your screen, you can use a keyboard shortcut to trigger the app and hover your mouse over to that area. The app will show you the dimension. It also works for measuring object dimensions. Just draw a square box wrapping around the image or area that you want to measure and it will show you the dimension. Remember the screenshot tool that I previously mentioned called CleanShot? Well, it's from the same developer as Pixel Snap. So if you have both apps installed, they integrate well with each other and allow you to take more precise screenshots on your Mac. If you frequently share links with others, you may find this URL shortening tool useful. It's easy to use when you copy a link. Triggering this app with a keyboard shortcut will shorten the link automatically. For instance, if I copy a long URL and hit the keyboard shortcut to shorten it, this is what I get. And if you're already using other link shortening tools, you can connect your account to short menu to streamline the process. If you ever wanted to grab a color code from an image, a video, or just anywhere on your screen. Zip is a universal color picker for your Mac. Just use a keyboard shortcut to trigger the color picker and hover your mouse over to the color with a simple click. The color code will then be copied to your clipboard. If you find yourself using the same sets of color frequently, you can also create your own color palettes in the built-in editor. There are other advanced features, but I don't think I know about those enough to talk about them. But feel free to check out the website if you want to find out more. The link will be in the description below. I don't think I need to sell you the importance of using a two-factor authentication app. I mean, if you use a password manager, complementing it with a two-factor authenticator is a no-brainer. For the longest time, I saved all my authentication codes in Google Authenticator. Well, it got the job done, but the frustration lies in times where I change a new phone or have to reinstall the app for whatever reason and have to reconfigure everything all over again. That's why I switched over to step two. It allows iCloud synchronization. I no longer have to worry about losing my setups if shit happens to any of my devices. Previously, I mentioned that CleanShot allows you to take non-selectable text from an image or a video using OCR technology. But I think Text Sniper does that a little better. First of all, it has a text-to-speech feature whereby you can have your Mac read the text you capture from an image. Working with Text Sniper is simple. Second of all, it's a QR code and barcode reader. If you capture a QR code or a barcode on your screen, it will convert it to text for you. The last feature is, in my opinion, the most useful one. You can take a photo with your iPhone and Text Sniper will capture the text from that image. It even detects all your Apple devices that have a camera and with the same Apple ID signed in and lets you choose which device to take a photo with. If you use Bluetooth headphones a lot or frequently switch between Bluetooth devices, you might find this app interesting. Tooth Fairy is an app that creates shortcuts on your Mac's menu bar to let you one-click connect and disconnect to your Bluetooth devices. A great feature that I like about Tooth Fairy is that once you add a Bluetooth device to the menu bar, every time you connect to that device, it shows a battery bar next to it. That way, I don't have to click anything to see how much battery the device has left, though not all Bluetooth devices are supported. From my experience, Apple devices tend to be working well with this app. When you open the app window, all the Bluetooth devices you've added will appear here. You can click the plus or minus button to add or remove a device. After that, you can customize an icon for the device and record a shortcut to trigger the connection and disconnection. Last but not least, we have Youdao Dick. This is a Chinese dictionary app designed for non-native like me to learn English. I've been using this app to learn English for over 10 years and I still love it. If I search the word philosophical, it shows me a comprehensive overview of the word. 
a short definition along with British English and American English pronunciations. Definitions from Oxford English Dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, and Collins English Dictionary. Derivatives of the word, frequently used short phrases for the word, other phrases, synonyms, and etymology. Then we have example sentences along with readings, and definition from Wikipedia. Not only that, if I want to save the word, I can store it and it will save the word to my personal vocabulary book. I can even create an account and have all my vocabulary synced across all my devices. The only shortcoming with this app is that it doesn't allow you to search through your vocabulary book. As you can see, I have well over a thousand words in here and every time I want to find a word or a phrase for my writing, I have to manually go through all of these words, which is insane. So there you have it, the 27 Mac apps I can't live without. I hope you get something out of it or at least enjoyed it. And if you do, a like and subscribe is very much appreciated. But before I go, I got a question for you. Which app from this list are you already using? Or which one piques your interest to find out more? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.